when they change it to this system, I mean, I'm just talking about personally, I can't see myself being further than 10 feet away from my best teammate because I want to just team shoot whoever they're going to shoot so that I can get full SR, right? So I feel like it's going to make the stacking even worse, even though the overall flow, I think, will improve and it'll make it feel faster. Activision devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't tell their consumers anything. Maybe that'll take some of the sweats away from uh, Shoot House. You can cope about that for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the fucking the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't you kick it off, Tanner? We gotta, this is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. We are absolutely and positively live. Boys and girls, welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty podcast, episode number 402. My name is Casey, also known as Razanon. Today, I'm joined by Tanner for an incisive commentary on Call of Duty Ranked Resurgence Warzone Fortunes slash Fortunes Keep. Fortunes Keep, yes. Fortunes Keep. Are you excited, man? I'm Platinum One, yeah. That's cool. You gold uh, so still? today... He's gold. I'm not. Hard stuck, by uh, the way. Hard stuck. I'm diamond. One. He's lost SR last four matches. Not true. I've never lost SR. I have. Uh, all right. So today, yeah, as I said, we're going to be talking about ranked resurgence slash fortunes keep, uh, which are kind of one and the same. Uh, the the goal was really to talk about both. So it doesn't really matter that they're intertwined. Um. But uh, there's a lot to say on both the map itself and also ranked specifically. And that's kind of how we're going to handle the episode. Uh, we're going to start by just talking about Fortune's Keep generally. So the play area and the game modes you can play on it, all of them, which are right now pubs resurgence and then ranked. And then we're going to do... Part two of the episode is going to be like ranked specific kind of thoughts that we have. So this isn't exactly going to be a first impressions because we've played quite a bit more uh, by now than we normally would have prior to a first impressions so-called episode. Um, but it is the first time we will have talked about either of these things. So... A lot of this is going to be kind of our opinion, our observations nested in that. As usual, we will have some pro tips for you guys as well and your, uh, for your incursions into, um, into Fortune's Keep, both ranked and uh, not ranked. So let me write something down here. Do a little write. Okay. Uh, yeah. So before we get into it, don't think we have many announcements. Uh, one we do have for you glorious patrons, patreon.com slash the drop shot. We did release our first bonus episode for the month of February this morning. It went live for all of our little patrons, every single one. And it was about Warzone. Uh, we've been playing... I've been playing more Fortune's Keep lately, more ranked than I have Big Map, but I've also played plenty of Big Map since uh, the launch of Season 2, and Tanner and I dedicated an episode to talking about Big Map and kind of doing a brainstorm. So for those of you who are patrons, you already know what that is, but basically we kind of theorycraft and figure out what's good in terms of Strategy, class setup, perks, equipment, guns, attachments, all of that. And this one was very productive. Because the last time we did a uh, 
a brainstorm was prior to season two and a lot changed with season two. We got quick fix functionality. Finally, uh, we got some buffs to other perks as well, like irradiated and shrouded to some degree. We actually do talk about that a little bit, surprisingly enough. Um, and we also talked a lot about, oh man, all, oh, like SMGs. SMG meta, close range meta, yeah. yeah. And that is, that was a good discussion because it's relevant right now, obviously, because, I mean, we recorded it yesterday, so all of our information was up to date if you like listen to it right now. But even once weapons get buffed and nerfed and stuff, there are a lot of nuggets in there that will be relevant even after like the SMG meta inevitably changes or something. Cause we're, we're talking about like, should you use this SMG that has like slow sprint to fire, but fast TTK or one in the middle or one that has a really fast sprint to fire, but not as good of a TTK. Those range, things yeah. are always like relevant. So uh, that was a really good episode. And we talked about other things as well. Those are the ones I remember, but that episode is now live for all of our patrons. If you wanted to go listen to it. And a lot of it is also relevant for fortunes keep, by the way, not all of it. Our primary focus was on big map because we plan to probably almost certainly do a ranked specific bonus episode this month as well. Um, but there was quite a bit of touching on what would be relevant specifically for resurgence. Uh, and a lot of the things that weren't necessarily resurgence geared that we talked about are still relevant for resurgence, like the whole SMG discussion. That's like probably more relevant actually for resurgence than yeah. big map, but it applies to both obviously. So yeah, that's now live. Did you enjoy that one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We talked a lot about like contracts too. That was another one. Oh, tax what contracts stance are worth. Yeah. Tax stance was a big one. Yeah. Talked a lot yeah, about yeah, tax yeah. stance, how that, cause that got buffed in season two. So we talked a lot about that. When to use that, if you should build your guns for it. Um, uh, and then, yeah, contracts, kind of talking about what contracts are worth doing and when, how we do it, what we should be doing, loadout purchasing. So, yeah, yeah I thought it was good. I I hope the a ranked, like, brainstorm or, like, tips or something uh, bonus episode would be really good. But I really hope we get the SR changes this coming week because it'd be cool if we got those and then we can do an episode like the last few days of the month that's yeah. relevant on ranked. Cause I, cause I would rather wait for that. Cause I don't want to talk about like tips and then the whole SR system changes a week later and then that's irrelevant. So I hope we get that, but I think either way, one of the bonus episodes will be something about ranked if we don't get those changes or not, but yeah, especially with how like much we've meta. been playing it. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. anyways, yeah. So that's now live for all of our patrons. Uh, if you're a patron, you can go listen <laughs> If you're not, you can become one. You get access to the entire back catalog, all 160 plus bonus episodes we've done on Patreon. So uh, that's it. So now I don't think we have any other announcements, do we? We did. Uh, we did our Patreon Damascus hangout last night as well. That was fun. Did some customs. Operation I was Tin a Man. Tired little boy. Operation yeah. Tin Man. We were actually full, so I got off the customs. They ruined we were, like, customs. To play. Yeah, here's a here's a hidden patch note. They've ruined customs. And we know because we do it almost every month. Uh, it used to let like you could do ten versus ten in gunfight, it didn't matter. Lobbies say they're thirty two players max, but it won't let more than six on a team anymore in like game modes that are six v six, which is super cringe. And they also destroyed hit reg again. The servers feel awful. So something happened, so that's cool. Yeah. Thanks, Microsoft. Yeah, L thanks, Mike. Yeah. Devs. Bring yeah. back we, Bobby. We want Bobby Coast. Yeah, well, I made the joke first. Okay. All right. Today, Fortune's Keep discussion. Wow. Tanner wrote discussion. Uh, all right. So, yeah, we're going to talk, as I said, we're going to start first half here. It's going to be about the map in general. So some of this will apply to rank. Some of it won't. And then the second half is going to be ranked specific kind of thoughts uh, that we have. And then we're going to end 
with uh, some speculation. Little question. Yeah. So, uh, starting off, the first thing to talk about with the map, obviously, is the map itself. Mm, the map of Fortune's Keep, yeah. Uh, and this, spoiler alert, the area where you play Resurgence Ranked or Resurgence Unranked on Fortune's Keep, unfortunately... On, on that island, yeah. ...is far and away the worst part of fortune's keep the it's not the loot pool yeah. it's not the like buy station density it's not the balloons or lack thereof it's not you know the guns as ground loot it's not the ranked system it's not the taps that you need to do it is literally just the map itself sucks a lot it's bad it's a bad map that isn't fun or good also. And it's worse than it used to be by a lot too. Um, by a lot too. It's worse I've been than thinking Ashika. About this. Yeah. yeah, it's worse than Ashika. Because Ashika has Ashika's like a pretty good map with some problems. The fog is kind of cringe. Very um, cringe, yeah. And the very middle of the map is a terrible POI called Castle. Those are, and there are probably some other nitpicks I could think of when, when we talk about Ashika. There aren't enough balloons. That's another one. Um, but besides Castle, like Ashika's pretty fun, actually, and cool to fight around. Now, inversely, Fortune's Keep is the opposite, right? So Ashika has one terrible POI. And then the rest of them are fine or good. Fortune's Keep is the exact opposite. And let me be clear. There's one good POI, kind of. And it's Overlook with like an asterisk. That's it. Overlook, and all of huh? the other POIs are either subpar or terrible and bad. And it only got worse again with all of the changes they made from the original Fortune's Keep. Because they took the center of the map and blew it out. So, that makes it really awkward, and I think that is why the map is so bad. I think all of the problems with the map stem from this. The center of the map, and therefore, what is most likely going to be playable area most of the time when circles close is the lowest point on the map. So it's just a giant crater and you're always just confused because you think, okay, well, I want to be middle of the map, middle zone, like in that vicinity so that I don't get held on a rotate when the next circle comes. Yeah. On the other hand, oops, if you play that way, you won't see anyone because everyone's above you, a kilometer above you, and you're just a duck who is sitting, ready mm. to be shot and killed. You're not going to get kills. You might not die right away. You will eventually because everyone is a much higher elevation than you. But you're not, you're definitely not getting any kills. So you'll just be sitting at mid. Oh, I'm safe like from the duck, gas. Yeah. But also, you won't be getting any kills. You'll be bored the entire game. And then if you eventually do have to rotate out of mid for like final circle, well, then you will be held. Um, it's really bad map design to put the, the central point of the map in a valley, like a deep valley too. Cause then you just, you can't play mid or you can't rotate even mid. You got to like play around mid the whole game this awkward ring around the rosy, but the bridge went up. It's so dumb. It's a, it's a terrible dog sh poop design map. It's not good at all. What are your thoughts on it? Wow. You don't like it, huh? No. Um, it just has the worst flow of all the maps, I think. And fortune's keep never had a good flow to it. And I'm not 100% sure why, but it's like, the the design of everything just seems random um and like it's it's too small of a map to have especially now so many height 
differentiate or, yep you know like everywhere it's just like down in the crater yep. people above the crater they're higher than you um overlook you're way higher than the other little buy station and that little house below it um and then below that there's a beach that's way down low uh then if you're at overlook you're above town if you're bottom town though you're way lower than the top of town like it's too there are too many different variations everywhere yep. along the map i think and like yeah, when you I, think I about it later like rebirth is so basic and think about the worst areas of rebirth they're the areas that are a lot lower that you can't fight out of that's fortunes keep in that general helicopter spawn that's the at whole like the map north edge yeah it's like there's so many the worst part so yeah. many bad areas where you just can't rotate in it feels like um and then yeah since since the crater is at mid so many matches in there so you have to try to traverse around mid around the crater which isn't very good uh, and then the other ones always seem to end town, which is also terrible. I'm not kidding. I've never had an ending on the east side of the map now that I think about it. I've never had an ending close to winery, close True. to pier, close to lighthouse. Maybe that True. would actually make the map feel different, but every single time the ending is right at mid or it's by town now that I think about it. Town, Dude, graveyard, so right. it never so pulls right. to the east, does it? Ever. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Not the once. Furthest... Literally not once. Yeah. I've had an played. ending at keep, which is honestly probably the furthest east I've ever had. Because even like ground zero endings are a little bit west of keep. Yeah. It's weird. Dude, I've never had right. an ending over there. I didn't think about that, but you're absolutely right. And that's right. the way better side we of the map. And you're see never the getting the winery until we decided to land there. Yeah. Because the game never ends on the east side, which is the more playable area. Like we used to always la land winery because yeah. it was like a normal kind of play space. It's mm. a couple buildings, pretty flat, some elevation changes, but they're not super drastic. They're little steps. Way more fun to fight there. The problem is, yeah, the game never ends there. You're absolutely right. Even though I'm not looking once. at the tack map right now, it's 50% of the map. And that side's a lot flatter too. That would be the yeah. way, that would be the better side to have endings on. You don't I would like them. this map a lot more actually if the game, if it ended east side as often as it ends west side. Yeah, imagine like pier endings because pier is a pretty good POI. I'll talk about it in a second. Like any endings in that area even. I don't know. Yeah, that it's is super always strange, town, but graveyard, now that you pointed out, you are absolutely right. And yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's probably part of the reason it feels so bad is you're never most of your yeah, match is on the, the worst really POIs. bad. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I feel like it was like that before because now they think about it. I remember us talking about on the first iteration is that town was the worst POI on the map, but you could not avoid it because didn't the circles always end there. I feel like we had that discussion before, too, because I was like, I hate town, but you can't avoid it because the match is always in there. So it's probably the same That's circles possible. we used to have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that needs to change. That's not that's statistically like astronomical how often it is not ended. E not Literally, once. I've played how many games of Fortune's Keep have I played? Probably 20. Tanner's probably played 40, 35. And literally not a single time has, it has the circle ended east of Keep. Not at, literally not once. Yeah, I haven't seen it. What are the odds of that? If it's truly a random circle, I mean, if if the east side is fifty percent of the map, some statistician could do it, but it would be like, yeah, absurd. Like we're we're talking exponents, absurd. Yeah. That's how low of a possibility it is. So it's definitely coded in this way, which is super cringe, super cringe. Yeah, yeah. but that it's doesn't like help. It's just somebody is always. It feels like no matter where you are. There's somehow somebody above me on right. a head glitch. Unless you're at keep and on the tallest little point of peak. But even then, it's just, yeah, it's like everywhere is a head glitch. So, yeah, ground zero, terrible POI, but it has a lot of good loot down there, unfortunately. So that's kind of where we've been going. We land in the crater. There are a bunch of chests down there. There's a buy station down there, like inside one of the hallways. It's a great little drop spot. It's yeah. a very safe buy station. It's kind of... It's actually kind of weird they put it there, to be honest, because it's so safe. You can't get it's shot like from the outside. It's like buy station. Yeah, You're right. I'm, I'm surprised more people don't land there, but there's so much loot, so many chests the down there. The longest sight line on that buy is like eight meters. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like actually. So yeah, that is like, really that's true. That's a good area to land specifically in ranked because ranked has more balloons and there's a balloon there every single time. So it's an awful area, but it's good to land there. And then we just immediately balloon out and go anywhere else. Yeah. That's Um, the pro strat. Usually town, unfortunately, because that's where the circle's pulling always. So usually got to do that. But, um, but yeah, that area of the map is not fun and it just feels like every late game you're going through there and you have to and go there's through no there. balloon there in pubs which Mm-mm. is insane there may maybe they're random in pubs so maybe there can be oh, one there maybe. i'm not sure but when we've played pubs there has not been one there yet yeah yeah which is really insane no it's probably not random now that i think about it because because the, if they have a set four you, they're going to spread them apart so it's probably not random so there's probably just not one in ranked um or in under in pubs i mean yeah yeah i don't know probably i would yeah i agree um and that leads to uh the next point which is yeah we need the same amount of balloons in pubs as in ranked it makes no sense that ranked has more we said this before the map launched when we heard about it and now having played both i stand by that I, i don't know why there would be fewer balloons in pubs it makes landing ground zero way less attractive in pubs. And I'm sure that's that there are other balloons that are absent in pubs that are present in ranked that really like ruin certain areas of the map, particularly because again, like Tanner said, how crazy the elevation changes are on this map. Um, if I, I like, I'm not going to land somewhere low elevation unless there's a balloon there. And, like, for pubs to just remove half of them, like the Ground Zero one's a perfect example. That goes from a POI I will go to to one I will literally never go to. Because I can't balloon out. It's so insane. We realized that, the, like, the first time. Yeah. Yep. We landed there without <laughs> like, thinking. Because oh, cool. we There's just no assumed balloon. there was a balloon there. There wasn't. And then we had to, like, walk to the the ex- incredibly dangerous ascender uh, that takes you to Overlook. And, like, there's a buy station right next to you when you come up there. People are always looking at it. Like, don't take that ascender. Yeah. So, like, I, it's just dumb. Yeah. So, we need more balloons. And it, we need a, a, the same amount of balloons in pubs as in ranked. I don't know why. Yeah. They don't I like the number that. in ranked. Yeah. I think, I think the eight is perfect. Yeah. I think the number in ranked is pretty good. You're not, like... I don't feel like I'm getting like ballooned on very often at all. In fact, I feel like I get ballooned on less in ranked resurgence than I do on Urzikstan. Crazy, crazily um, enough. Um, yeah, for sure. Because it's because it's so, so dangerous. Because we get shot from everybody. And if yeah, and true. if people are paying attention, smart, you should be shooting anything you see in the air. Because if you get one bullet on that guy, he lands. Another team kills him. A short while later, you'll get full kill. Uh, yeah so we learned that yeah yeah because tanner and i were confused about that and i thought it would be insane if it worked that way but it does it does so and yeah it is shoot insane, at everything but, yeah. yeah it is insane and it does work that way so yeah shoot at everything uh if you get like one hit marker and the guy gets a bad drop and dies you get you'll get your five points as if you killed him yourself it's really insane so anyway uh, the visibility is also terrible. Uh, it's the worst visibility in Warzone right now, easily, including Urzik between Urzikstan, the three Urzikstan resurgence maps, Vondel, and Ashika. It has the worst visibility of all of them. Fortunes Keep. Um, the stone that the keep and all these stone buildings are made of the gatehouse the terraces parts of town that like color scheme blends in with a lot of operator skins now sometimes people are using like the zombie skin or whatever and it's not an issue but people have like blended into the buildings and stuff when i'm outside a lot more on this map than has ever happened to me on any other map in warzone post integration yeah um which is which was really surprising to me that that was happening. But there are times where I'm like outside and like some guys like blending into a wall or something, uh, and that's pretty bad, obviously. Um, and ironically enough, 
where the visibility is has never once been a problem for me is inside a building. Every time I'm inside any building, including keep, which is the one I was most worried about because of how bad it was in the first iteration. Yeah. Uh, I see people. Great. I see them fine inside. Uh, but outside by like these buildings and stone buildings, like the whole West side of the map, which is where every game is like we just talked about. Uh, people do like tend to blend in a little bit, which is weird. I, I, I was surprised by that. And in addition, I will remind you all, there are still bushes. Now, luckily, the bushes are not that big of a problem when every game ends on the west side of the map. But if a lot of games were ending east, or if you like drop east side where there are way more bushes, this becomes a huge problem as well for reasons we talked about. You can literally like, get inside of a bush and you're very difficult to see. Um, so yeah, it has like the worst visibility in Warzone right now. Now I will add to be clear, I wouldn't say the visibility is that bad on this map, uh, besides the bushes, obviously, but you just, again, I, I don't encounter them because you always are forced into like keep and town area and there aren't bushes there really. Um, so like, yeah, the visibility, it's the worst right now of all the play spaces, but it's still not that bad. Uh, like even the blending into buildings and stuff, it does happen, but it's not like super often and it's still way better visibility than we ever had in like Warzone one, for example. So it's kind of like a nitpick, but I mean, I almost never don't see someone in Urzikstan if they're outside. Yeah, never. If the, if I should. Mm -hmm. In fact, I might say literally never. I don't think that's literally ever happened once. If I'm outside and the other guy's outside on Urzikstan and I don't see them and I should, I don't think that's happened a single time. And I can't say that about Fortune's Keep. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, on the topic of Keep, by the way, I don't know if it's different than how it was before the interior because we avoided it in, you know, the first iteration of uh, Fortune's Keep because it was so dark. But now that it's not, you can, like, go there and see people inside. The problem is that building sucks a lot. I hate fighting in keep. It's really bad. It's one of the worst buildings. Um, it might even be worse than castle because it has like as many floors, but they're all wider and there are like little side rooms where at least in castle, it's like pretty narrow and up in each building, you know, I don't, I'm not yeah, ready to say uh, it's worse better than, than castle. castle. I think actually, yeah, I'm not ready to say um, which is worse because they're both quite bad. But playing inside of Keep is it's a Byzantine maze. Like you're not going to find people easily. You'll hear them easily, but you won't know where they are uh, unless you design the building yourself. Like you would have to grow up there and have experienced childhood, childhood living in that Keep to know the layout of it. It's Big, complicated, weird. There's like random areas you can like get onto a little like patio. I hate it. It's not yeah. good. It's not a good POI at all. Uh, again, the middle of the map is a literal crater. I, I mean, cool and have fun playing mid zone. You're below everyone. Um, and then that makes the whole flow like, yeah, really awkward. You either play on the edge of, of the map and then you rotate in for gas or you play mid and just don't see anyone and you're probably dead because yeah. everyone's shooting down on you. It makes no sense. Um, it, it, it just, it defies reason why they did this. Yeah. yeah. And in addition, the entire map is surrounded by a coastline. So like we overlook, for example, it's one of the POIs. I actually really like that POI. It's got a buy station pretty close. That's fairly safe. Actually quite close. That's fairly safe. It's got a balloon. You have height over mid because it's a POI and everyone does. Um, 
And you also have height over the coastline. That's to your like northwest, west northwest. A lot of height over that coastline. So you're and in addition, the POI itself, that building at Overlook is a uh, is a fun building to fight in. It's a cool building and it's got an ammo refill up top. One of the interactable ones. It's like it's a solid POI. I really enjoy fighting there, but we can't land there because every time we do our loadout, our free loadout will drop on the coast. I was describing that is an actual click down in elevation so you jump down to go get it and then everyone's just farming you from overlook yeah. or the other the i don't think it's the lighthouse but some other whatever high elevation area because on that coastline you're lower than everyone and that's true for like most of the map there's just like this coastline surrounding the map that's way lower elevation and way disadvantaged over everything else so if you land mid you're not going to see anyone and you'll get shot at, but at least your loadout will drop not on the coastline. If you land anywhere else, your loadout's going to drop on the coastline and you're going to get killed by someone like really high above you also. Like, it's just so bad. It's such a bad map. And all of the elevation changes and how dramatic they are, like Tanner said, really contribute to how terrible it is and miserable. Yeah. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like keep feels better. I don't really know why. Maybe it's because also there's footstep audio now, so you know there's somebody around you. Whether you know if they're above or below you, that's a different story, but at least you know somebody's in that area. I feel like that was probably something before in Warzone 1. Um, also, last time we had keep, who knows, was Dead Silence ground loot still in the game? And in every box? I don't think so. It is so. right now. Yeah, I saw Isaac use it in ranks. It's not common though. People don't really. Yeah, it's not used. But I mean, that could have been why too. I don't know. Yeah, keep just always felt awful before. I I really really want to see actual gameplay now and see if if it was that if it is a lot better now or we're just imagining things. I don't know. But yeah, oddly enough, I think keep and peer are almost the only two POIs that feel better than the original Fortune's Keep. I guess Coney Outpost too, just because there's more loot, but it's like it's not actually like a better area to fight, and still nobody goes there. Um, even though there's better loot, there's still like not enough loot to do anything there. But yeah, Keep feels better for some reason, and Pier does. And then pretty much everything else is just the same or worse. Like right. Towns, exactly the same, but really, it's worse because we have the sun glare on the east side of the map. And a lot of these windows, if you're in town in certain areas, you'll look out the window, looking east, trying to shoot some guy off a head glitch that's above you in another building in town. Well, guess what? You're staring at sun glare. You're staring at sun glare from that window. So you can't even then see the guy on the roof that has a head glitch that's higher than you looking at you, shooting at you. So that POI is just worse because of that too. So yeah, it's, um, then of course, yeah, mid is just a disaster now. Um, yeah, it's like, why, why do you do the sun glare thing? Why do we continue to do that? Yeah. Let's not forget. Nobody about that. wants, True. nobody wants those changes. Just yeah. make it sunny. Make every map always like how Urzikstan looks right now. There's no reason to do sunset. There's just, yeah, just don't stop doing it. Please just copy paste that skybox. It's, you guys like, nailed no, it on yeah. Urzikstan. <laughs> But yeah, it's like yeah. a couple of the POIs are like Pier's fun now. Um, keep, I did, we did the uh, the Easter egg at Keep, which is like you open this spiral staircase up, uh, you go down it, you light some flames, you throw like a molly or a thermite above the door, and you get into like the secret treasure room, basically with a bunch of treasure. That's cool. Yeah, but when we were doing it, there wasn't good loot like so it was trios ranked oh. and we were doing it right there weren't even boxes L like like no munis no armor boxes there was one personal supply box in trios <laughs> and that was it <laughs> there's like no money there's no place not even really loot down there um so i don't know there's not a huge reason to go out of your way and do that if they're gonna make that i feel like they need to buff it but it was fun fighting down there because people really wanted to get to it one game and we I think I had nine kills 
in Kiev by the time we even got that thing open, which was probably three minutes into the game, three and a half, four minutes, just constant fighting because they, they can only come down one way. And so I'm just laying there watching the staircase. They keep pushing, 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 just so much SR people farming there. So that made my experience in Keep a lot better. But I don't know why there's no no loot. Maybe it is a lot better just in pubs and they nerf it in ranked. But Yeah, that's what I would assume. Yeah, they need, yeah, I feel like they need to kind of buff that stuff because it makes people go to that area and fight. Like it was very fun fighting there. So make it worth actually fighting over. But yeah, most of the maps yeah. just got a lot worse. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And kind of related to that, uh, end games. The end game, when I play Fortune's Keep, actually most of the time is quite fun and exciting. Uh, but, conversely, it is often very one-sided because of how many drastic elevation changes there are in most areas of the map, mm. which is to say the west side, which is where every game ends. And it really comes down to whoever has high ground is almost guaranteed to win. Uh, and like that isn't that fun or exciting because it's kind of just a foregone conclusion. So like if, if you're on the coastline and I'm not, I want, I win. If you're not on the coastline, you're just on the ground above it, but I'm on the rampart. I win. Yeah. If you're on the rampart, but I'm in the bell tower, I win. If I'm in the bell tower, but you're at the top of the keep on the roof on a disgusting head glitch, you win. And it's like so easy for that to happen. It is very, very, very seldom. There's been one game where everyone was kind of on the same elevation uh, end game. And it was in it was the game Tanner was referring to in front, uh, like by the gatehouse area. And we were all kind of on the same elevation uh, and we ended up yeah. winning that game. That was the only time I can think of. And we've gotten to end game a lot in Fortune's Keep uh, where it, it wasn't just a drastic, massive advantage to one team over another because of how the map is designed with all of the crazy elevation changes. Um, and that is... I mean, exploitable. If you're good and smart, you'll keep that in mind and always be going up, which is what you should be doing. Uh, but on the other hand, if someone got there first, they're not going to let you just climb up. To the same elevation as them yeah that's why it's so good they're gonna rip you off of it and if you try to take them off of it they're probably on a sloped roof that has a nasty head glitch or they're gonna dip into a the keep or some building or whatever it is um and that makes it pretty one-sided a lot of times and then it becomes not really about like gun skill or shooting your gun uh it, and more about who was prescient enough to like get up there sooner. or who got the lucky pole basically or who got the I lucky mean, that's going to happen exactly, either way yeah. but especially on a map that's as small as this is with the the vertical changes yeah it's it makes it very rng very very and and if you get unlucky with the rng it is a lot more one-sided than if you get unlucky with rng on urzikstan mm -hmm. you know like, oh, the circle pulled toward them. But, like, we're both in buildings, and I'd rather it pulled toward me, obviously. But I'm not, like, for sure dead because it pulled toward them because I got unlucky. Yeah. Whereas in this, if you get an unlucky pull, and you have to get off of your head glitch, and they can climb onto a new one, you're just for sure dead. Yeah. Like, and that happens very commonly, and it's annoying. Yeah. So... There are times when that hasn't been the case. Like, there was also a time at Graveyard, actually, which is the only good POI on the west side of the map, by the way. Um, a game ended Graveyard, and that was fun. And, like, everyone was kind of on an even playing field there as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again, if games ended more often on the east side of the map, this would be way less annoying. Because if a game ends around Winery... Yeah, there's still elevation for sure, but it is not the same as um, 
as it is like if it ends keep or terraces or town or overlook. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 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 Um, another thing for me is like, I continue to say this about resurgence and I'll continue to say it cause it makes no sense to me. I don't understand why I have my loadout for way less of the match in a respawn TDM mode than battle royale. Like I, I, it just, it needs to drop earlier. It just has to drop earlier. It's hot either way. People camp it either way. It's never safe either way. Like just give it to me a circle earlier. So I don't have to lose it. I, I don't have to use a 10 round MCW 6.8 build. Right? Like just like I'm playing a fast mode like that. Cause I want to use my guns and it just be chaotic. And it doesn't make sense that I get to use my guns less in that mode. So uh, like you're kind of forced to try and buy a loadout, which is often pretty difficult because people landing on you, getting down. You spend a couple minutes looting up. There's not enough loot. There's not enough chests. You can't find enough money. Then your teammate who had 4,000 dies, comes back. So he's got less money. Then you die, come back. You have less money. So then they, like it makes it harder to buy a loadout half the time unless you really just land somewhere totally uncontested and can find a big stack, which doesn't hasn't happened really much from my experience um so yeah it's like i just i just want to use my loadout guns right so like what we were actually what we felt like we were forced to do is we would never have enough money to buy a loadout so eventually we just started buying an smg or something and just using that yeah. so we eventually got our loadout then it's like right. cool we get our loadout it's usually camped there's always somebody camping it why wouldn't you it's so easy to they land in like five distinct spots on the map wherever you are it it also lands too far from you for that small of a map a lot of times i think it lands a little too far from you and it's just yeah because of the, the way the map's designed somebody's always above it just watching the loadout why wouldn't you right. just sit there and watch it you know somebody's gonna go for it at one point so yeah of course yeah i don't blame people that's for another doing major it. issue i think yeah yeah and i the... think it's just worse on this map because of the way it's designed yeah the loadouts drop in terrible spots and they drop far too late for a resurgence mode, for sure. Um, it is very difficult to get your free loadout very often. Um, and yeah, because of how the map is designed, it's again, like we stopped landing overlook only because every time you are at overlook, your loadout will drop northwest of you on the coastline and you will die so many times trying to get it. If you even do, because another thing they should probably do for resurgence is the free loadouts drop in like clusters. So it drops by your team, but it also drops in a little cluster with everyone else's crate uh -huh. that's in that vicinity. It should probably not do that. And, drop and you should like, have just your own box, I think. Almost. Yeah. 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 And it should drop within 50 meters of one of your teammates at the most. I was going to say it should almost just drop on one of your teammates, but then that kind of gives away people's positions. So maybe not that, but yeah. And you know, but that's yeah, it's yeah. When, when we were playing too, when like something else I realized, I'm like, you know what? This is why I like Vondel so much. Cause Vondel, there's so much loot. You can easily buy your own loadout. Cause the map's also big enough. There's enough loot. You can buy your own loadout or the free loadout drop is usually totally accessible. Cause again, the map size you just can't on a Sheikah or Fortune's Keep. It's just, it's so hard to get your free loadout drops. That's another main reason we never liked a Sheikah very much is because like w the loadout drops are always like in the middle of a road right next to something and everyone's trying to grab their loadout from there and everyone's watching it and it's being camped. And that's why like Vondel just has such a better flow in my opinion is because you can actually get your loadout really quickly. And then it just mm -hmm. makes everything more fun when I get to use my own guns. That's true, too. Yeah, that definitely is part of the reason we like Vondel. Because you're right. It's, like, super easy. And even if you can't get your free one, which does happen on Vondel sometimes, mm -hmm. you can easily get enough money yeah, to buy one. Yeah, always. You, like can, no you can land certain areas, loot for two minutes easily, and yeah, have enough cash. we've done that. You just yeah. can't do that on keep, it feels like. Yeah, agreed. Uh, next thing here in pubs, they have the zombies power-ups in. This isn't that big of a deal, because they're going to go eventually, I hope. Um, they're pretty stupid. Uh, most of them yeah. are just dumb and it just adds more than anything like visual and audio clutter to the game. So I, I hope that just goes like I picked up the undead site one where it highlights enemies red and your POV. But what it also does is like 
essentially make your screen look grainy and then also kind of black and white. So I'm like, dude, really? I accidentally picked this up because I just open a chest and run over everything. I don't even want it. It lasts for 45 seconds. Everything's black and white. Like, I don't even want this, you know? Yeah. Um, there are, like, the speed boost is pretty fun, but again, like, that lasts for, what was it, 60 seconds, 45 seconds? Entirely too long. That should actually be 10 seconds, 15. Lasts too long. It's also, I think, a little uninteresting because there are so many power-ups that it's not, like, anything rare. It's like, oh open another chest, got another two power-ups. Like, it's just boring at that point. There are so many times where I have two or three power-ups at once. I'm like, dude, it'd be a lot more interesting if they were harder to find and I could find two or three a game, not two or three every time I open a chest, right? So Yeah. But again, not too big of a deal because that'll be gone. But I think primarily that is the reason, especially pubs, feels like total ass on this map. Just BS like that right now. Pubs feels... Yeah. Awful on Fortune's Keep. Rank doesn't feel so, great. Pubs feels awful. Awful, yeah. awful, bad. Fewer balloons, power-ups, not playing against gold players. Yeah, pretty bad. Um, yeah, we. I mean, we saw this coming. We read the zombie power-ups thing, and immediately I was like, this is dumb, but whatever. Yeah. It's it's a limited time. I don't really care that much. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, yeah, I hope it's I gone by like mid-season, but also... If ranked is in on the map, I'm, I'm probably just going to play that most of the time. But yeah. And then, like, with the loot, too, there's just, there's way too few armor plates on this map. Like, I, I think the devs forgot to bring the, the uh, Muni and armor boxes over that they left on Urzikstan, which has, you know, one in every chest you open. I don't know if I've seen one on Fortune's Keep. They just don't exist, I guess. I don't know. I would, yeah, they I would are love quite to have rare. them there. It'd be kind of cool. Muni's not as Loose big of a deal because there are. Rare extremely you don't find them yeah yeah, yeah. You don't. and there's the bug right now too where players aren't dropping plates when they die i don't know if that was just on big map though or on everything too that could be why it ends up being less but mm. uh muni's not that big of a deal because you can hit the ammo refills but plates it's like there are just there just needs to be more chests on the map in general i think yeah yeah you shouldn't die because you don't have plates you should die because you got killed before you had time to like line of sight and replate in general. Yeah. Like you shouldn't be running out of plates in Warzone in any mode, I don't think. Like unless you're trying to just camp a rooftop for the whole game, then sure. That's when a limited number of plates makes sense cuz you shouldn't be you should have to like move for resources at some point. But like generally speaking, if you're playing like normally, you should never be out of plates. You should... It, it's not like, oh, people have too many armor plates, so I can't get any kills. Like, that's not how this game is going to work. Uh, and that happens a lot. Like, you will go minutes, actually, on Fortune's Keep without plates. And yeah. it's hard to get to a buy or something to buy A lot buy of the any. buys are hard to use. Yeah, they're in kind of yes. rough spots. But they, because again, that's the way the map is smokes. designed. I don't know if they could put them in better locations. Yeah. And because I don't auto pick up smokes, I can't like smoke a buy if it's in a bad spot and buy some yeah, plates. That's true. So I'm just like forced to play without plates until like a resurgence timer happens or I move somewhere else somehow. Yeah. So yeah, I, anyway. I wonder what the resurgence crate respawn uh, speed is. I tried to look that up and couldn't exactly find it because I was kind of thinking too, quick. maybe they could just have those respawn quicker and that would kind of help the situation mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, it, it just kind of seems like there aren't enough chests on the map, period. Like, think of the building blow overlook that you kind of keep talking about. It's not exactly where it says overlook, but it's down from overlook. That's where the buy station is, to the east of overlook. It's down there. There's a buy station. There's that little house that's like maybe a bar or something. A little two-story bar where there's the ammo refill. Like, that building... That whole building, like, half the time doesn't even spawn a chest in it. I'm like, why is there not a chest in this building? Like, what is going on? It's, it or just seems like when we there are so many the locations. Winery? Um, and there were no... Yeah, there we were no all... Loot. We couldn't find anything. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't. We literally didn't find there a was plate nothing. as a team. I couldn't yeah. even find a... It was like a few minutes into the match, and I hadn't found a gun or something in that area we were fighting. Yeah. Because we were just getting yeah. landed on, fighting, dying, landing back. Just couldn't find anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the map needs more chests in general. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Today's episode is brought to you by SBMM Off. If you're tired of those sweaty lobbies, then we have just the product for you. Go to sbmmoff.com and use code DROPSHOT for $5 off their lifetime VPN and geofence. No more monthly VPN fees, just one payment. And you have access to all future updates. For those of you wondering, no, a VPN is not against the Activision Terms of Service. It's not cheating. Stop. And this product only works on PC. Sorry to you console players. Their VPN service is a legitimate way to change your region in order to connect to servers across the globe and find easier games. We know how sweaty those evening lobbies can be after a long day at work. So why not trick the game into thinking you live in a different part of the world where it's early morning? The VPN allows you to play on local servers with low ping, while the game actually thinks you're far away. When combined with the Geofence, you're able to play on servers outside of your available local servers, meaning a player in NA can choose to play 100% on European servers and vice versa. It even comes with a built-in world map time zone sheet to decide which server will be the best at that current time. As you can see on the screen here, you have many different region options to choose from. Argentina, Italy, Kenya, Taiwan. It goes on and on. It's extensive. These tools allow you to find easier and more variants in lobbies instead of being crushed by Call of Duty's manipulative skill-based matchmaking system. SBMM Off is the only VPN and geofence service that is dedicated 100% to Call of Duty players. Go to sbmmoff.com and use code DROPSHOT for $5 off. The big streamers can VPN, you can too. Uh, so, okay, now we're going to move on to ranked specific kind of little observations. Um, and I'll do another spoiler alert. As I said, the worst part of like rank resurgence and fortunes keep is the map itself and everything rank specific or most of the things that are rank specific are actually quite like fun and good and handled. Well, we're not really going to talk about those things because it's basically all a holdover from Warzone ranked last year. You know, like the ranking system is cool. I like how there's the you can rank up with stars, which doesn't require you to be good. It just requires time investment. And then also the SR ladder, which is a separate thing, but you can also only get that in ranked. I think that system is super cool. The SR challenge bonuses things. We've already talked about that, so we're not going to really mention it more here. But that's that was a great idea and that was handled really well. Um, and ranked is quite fun in spite of the fact that you're forced to play on this terrible map to do it. Yeah. Um, so if it sounds like we're bashing ranked starting now, keep in mind we're not, and we'll say some more thoughts at the, at the end. Uh, but there are some problems ranked specific, uh, for ranked resurgence right now. Now this first thing, I'm not sure if this is ranked specific. It could be Fortune's Keep specific, but I know it doesn't happen on any other map. So it's either only in Ranked this happens, or it's only on Fortune's Keep that this happens, Ranked and Unranked. I don't know which. There are banner pop-ups in the worst possible spot on my screen, often enough. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they say. And I don't know where exactly on my screen they are. I don't care. Change it. It only happens on Fortune's Keep, but I've died once or twice because there was a giant banner pop-up directly where I'm trying to see enemy characters. And it's only happened to me on Fortune's Keep. I don't know if it's ranked only. I don't know what the banner says. That should tell you how, how, little, how little in importance it is that I don't even remember what the banner said. But it was also so important, evidently, that it had to obstruct my vision of the guy shooting me because it had to be in the center of my screen and not, yeah. and not see through. I think it's all. the events because they're guaranteed the same public events every single circle in ranked. So it's circle two, three, and four. There's always a public event. So oh, it's probably maybe that's that. what it is. Yeah. Yep. Could be that. But yeah, it's, it's funny how they've kind of mostly fixed the precision airstrike banner by this point after changing it like 25 times since warzone launch but everything else is still in the middle of my screen yeah 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 it's, it's and it only great. happens on fortune's keep 
it, it, it's yeah like, i mean it happens everywhere you're mode. just noticing it and fortunes keep because it's so small and like the it's mm. it's small fast the circle the, the events happen every single time you're always in a fight so you notice it more often than in big map when you're just running yeah, around looting possible. it's in the middle of your screen and yeah. then things just always happening in your area in general like streaks being called in getting notifications for that because you're closer to them um mm -hmm. yeah one <laughs> so you know in a uh, warzone 2 last year when they added the you couldn't spam like airstrikes or maybe that was even before last year but basically if someone else in your area called a precision airstrike you can't uh right. i just noticed like two days ago for the first time i'm adsing in a fight it's late game we're at overlook of course because we're playing fortune's keep and that's where all the circle ends all the circles in i'm adsing like watching these people and i'm like i have an airstrike i'm gonna like try to pull it out now and i'll still ads and i pull it out and I kid you not, directly oh. through my optic, my reticle. This, th there, you can't use this kill streak for another eight seconds or something like that. So it's sitting there on my screen for a good two to three seconds as I'm ADSing, trying to look at something. Yeah. How was that ever coded in and put in the middle of my screen to begin with? Who ever thought that was going to be a decent idea? Ever, you know, like just put that anywhere else on my screen, anywhere else, anywhere. Yeah. A little right. bit above, a little bit below. Like, what are we doing? So then that was stuck on the middle of my screen. I'm like, awesome. Directly inside of my optic. Sweet, man. Yeah. Why yep. do they do these things? I Yeah, I don't know either. As if when I try to take out the binoculars and it doesn't work, I all, like that alone is enough information yeah, for when me. Yeah, I'm spamming the button and nothing. It's like, okay, yeah. yeah, I can't call one right now. Got it. I don't need a giant... Word document to open in front of my reticle to tell me that this isn't working. I can tell. So yeah, whatever is going on there, change it. Uh, all of it, because yeah. it's all. It happens very often to me on Fortune's Keep. Yeah. Um. Next thing, rank specific. Uh, the queue times I will say are longer, and I'm not mad about it. Uh, every once in a while, they're a little too long. But most of the time, they're longer than pubs, but not so long that I want to, like, start a riot or anything. And again, if I have to wait an extra 30 seconds to get a tightly matched lobby where everyone is roughly the same rank, I'm more than okay with that. That's what a rank system should be. So I think the queue times are actually pretty good. In general, most of the time, this could change if I were like higher rank, though. I I don't know how long the top 250 kids are forced to wait. Yeah, I don't um, know. I haven't watched. I haven't really, really noticed. I have been watching streams. I just haven't been yeah. paying attention to their queue times. But anyways, uh, I think an, an additional wait time for a strict lobby is is worth it for ranked. Um, on the other hand, there are a lot of features that I would expect and or that we used to have for ranked that we don't again. Uh, for example, I can't back out of a lobby uh, once I, like, press the button or something. I don't know exactly how this works, but they don't once either. I queue it's bugged. for a match, you, like, can back out at this screen, but you can't back out at that one, and then you can back out again at a next one, and then you can't back out again. So that's weird. Ch fix that. Uh, let me back out up until the moment I am placed into a lobby, I would say. Uh, duh. Um, and then also, if you're going to disconnect my teammate and I'm in the pregame lobby waiting for match to start, 58 seconds left. If I'm in that stage and my teammate has disconnected or crashed... And it's your fault that he did, by the way. Let me leave the game. Or if my teammate didn't crash, let me leave the game. Don't make me like Alt F4 to get out. If my teammate disconnects, I should be allowed to leave the game with no penalty. And you're supposed to, but it just doesn't work. I don't know if that's ever worked correctly in ranked mode, but that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, because I crashed one game. As it was before we loaded in. It was when we were like searching for a match still. I yeah. crashed. It wouldn't let you guys stop searching. So you guys are like, Correct. cool. Guess we're just going to have to duo. And then 
I launch my game again. Like maybe I can reconnect. Doesn't let me reconnect. They it get a random, a random on our team. It put yeah. a random on their squad and they couldn't leave. Even though that's not yep. what they queued with. That should not be the case. Yeah, there are a lot of little issues like that. Um, but again, that's been in since Warzone 2 ranked launched last year. That's how you know this is the exact same system. So they never thought yeah. about changing the SR, by the way. They just sent over the same exact system because it has all the same exact bugs we've had for a year. Yeah, smile. So fix all of that as well. Yeah, a lot yeah. needs fixed with rank mode. Um, another thing, explosive ammo is banned, by the way. Hey, by the way, there's an XRK stalker build with explosive ammo. Okay. Because they just, they port the same ground loot over to ranked mode without changing anything. So right. all the same guns are in ground loot. Shotguns are in ground loot. All of it. Uh, I, if you're banning like four or five shotguns, why do we even have any shotguns as ground loot at all? So I do wonder if that explosive uh, ground loot build will one shot, by the way. I assume it won't. But I'm curious to see if it's like bugged or something and it would one shot because they do say in the patch notes all snipers the most damage it can do is 299 but you never know maybe that one maybe that bug good question build yeah one shots I don't know good um, question. another thing too is they say thermals are banned but that's not the case I've seen Giga dad if anyone's heard of him he's like he Changing. got like 8,000 nukes last year uh, he just you know kind of camps on roofs and gets a lot of wins um, but he's using a thermal in a bunch of clips and he's like, there's a thermal that works and it's not banned. So cool. There's another issue. Uh, it's, it's just funny that like so many of these little issues get past, past them every single time. Yeah. And to be fair, like the ground loot thing and th some of the thermals slipping past, I, these are like problems, but this is not that big of a deal to me. Like I get it. it there are so many things that are going to be different. Like some things are going to probably slip through the cracks. It's been long enough to where these things probably should have been patched out by now, but I expect they will be by next week. So these are like not the end of the world, but the, I mean, not being able to leave a game when your teammate disconnects, as Tanner said, they've had plenty of time to fix this issue and it's a big deal of an issue. And it still hasn't been fixed. So that's where I give them like no leeway. But yeah. like something in ground loot that shouldn't be there slipping through, like whatever, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it is just, it speaks to the lack of a quality assurance department at any Activision studio. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a QA team. And I'm glad that, I'm glad QA got laid off specifically. God, and I'm not kidding. It. Someone recently, by the way, was so mad on a social media account we have. Because I said we said that in a TikTok or a short or something or in an, ep and yeah. in an episode, obviously. Yeah, it was a clip. Someone commented like, "How dare you say they got laid off?" Where did off they say that? I, oh, I don't remember. It was like a if week you or saw two it, ago. then it was probably like a YouTube short comment or something. Yeah, it was on YouTube in some capacity. I should have saved the screenshot. It was very funny. But let me just say this because that person shamed me and it made me reconsider. I reconsidered. I double down and stand by what I said. I'm glad anyone at QA for Call of Duty got laid oh, wow. off. They should have been fired and blacklisted from the industry as far as I'm concerned. And maybe disallowed basic public services. You think? Yeah. Including health insurance. Maybe. maybe. But they yeah. definitely should have gotten laid off because they're terrible at their job. Uh, we've seen this time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Another thing, W like, QA team layoffs at Call of Duty. God. W lay off more of them. Got it. Outsource it. Yeah, do some outsourcing. Uh, so like with the ground loot stuff that I'm talking about, though, like eventually, I I can understand why this wasn't already there, but rank should have its own set of specific ground loot. Um, because it's like they should be using builds that actually make sense especially since you can't get your load out. So they should have good ground loot guns that are like based around meta weapons rather than three different MCW 6.8 ground loot builds. I don't want a 10 round magazine MCW 6.8. I don't want a 20 round mag MCW 6.8. I don't ever want it. I'm never going to take it. Put in full auto guns, uh, assault rifles, SMGs, LMGs, anything that's 
somewhat meta and is fully auto and has a magazine of more than 10 is pretty cool. Shotguns, yeah. just get those out too. They're, uh, ground loot shotguns are never good. Just get them out. They're not busted. They're not usable. So just get those out as well, right? Um, so yeah. that would be ideal, especially on Resurgence. Big map, I don't care at all. But Resurgence ranked, it would be really nice if we had a specific set of ground loot dedicated to ranked play. That makes sense. Uses meta attachments. Some ARs have like the eagle eye on it, you know, or more ARs have the eagle eye. SMG builds make sense. Things like that. That'd be really nice to have. That would be we'll uh, never get a it. lot better. And it would make sense. It would make a lot of sense. It should work. Skill that gap. Like, yeah, for sure. But yeah, it's something I haven't thought of, but you're right. And it's not like it would be that much work. You design, yeah. you know, whatever, 25 different gun setups and then you put because a lot of them the could pool. stay it's like a hard. lot of them make sense like even there's an mcw build with a 60 round mag and a choreo eagle eye on it the gun sucks it has an awful time to kill but that's a fine ground loot gun to have it's yeah a 60 totally, round mag and a three times off yeah it's fine you know i'm picking it up yeah uh another thing so they ban a bunch of things you know riot shields explosive ammo as we've said a bunch of shotguns they don't ban any melee weapons so I don't know if people are figuring out that tonfas are still good, but I was playing the other the night tonfa and incident. there was a guy using tonfas. Yeah. And guess what? They're still a lot better than a gun up close, man. When you start getting whacked with those things, you're going to die to it most of the time. Are you talking uh, about I've when also I was seen, with you and Jake got tonfed? I've also seen some TikTok clips. Incident? I don't think, I think it was when I was playing with Jake and at night, I thought he died to tonfas. Okay. Cause Jake also, it was hilarious. It was the did, last team. It was the last team. Jake's the last one alive, which is a fluke. And uh, there yeah, were three people on the other team, but Jake had high ground on the ramparts. So he like shoots one guy and downs him. Uh, they smoke or Jake smokes or something. Jake jumps down there. The second guy, he just throwing knife one downs him. And I was like, oh, it's crazy. And then the last guy, He's like ready to kill him and he just charges through the smoke like a brave so fast. Heart yeah. Trailer, movie trailer and just tonfos him and we lose. Yeah. Yeah, so like, like how Jake got a cheese down and then that guy got a cheese win. It was mm. pretty funny honestly. But yeah, ton yeah, take out melee weapons period. Literally there are a lot of things. Usable. Scatter mines. Yeah, uh, like claymores, prox mines as ground loot, even just like take that out of ground loot. If people want to set that up as a class, I guess that's fine. But why are those in the ground loot as well? I don't know. It's just like give me, give me a plate everywhere a scatter mine spawns instead. How about that? Yeah, yeah, That'd yeah, nice. yeah. Replace all of this trash with just a single yeah. plate, and there would be more than enough plates on the map. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, like how. How did those make it past? I mean, that should be obvious. Any melee weapon like that that could just destroy somebody up close should be banned, right? You remove one-shot snipers, which would have an insane amount of flinch. They don't ADS that fast. You'd be at a disadvantage if you tried to use a one-shot sniper in ranked resurgence when you get to higher ranks. I mean, that'd be insane to use. I would never snipe. So you ban snipe. those. Yeah. I would never snipe, ever. I would yeah. never think to snipe in ranked resurgence on Fortune's Keep. Yeah, um, true. They ban snipers, but then they but not don't tonfas. ban tonfas. That like, is please think about something and make sense, please. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Another issue: kill streaks. Um, oh no! I think oh, they no. need to just only be purchasable. At the very least, make it so they only spawn in orange chests. Uh, it's it's crazy. And the also, of streaks, only man. UAVs, mortars, and precisions, and they are. 5% as common as they are now. Like, mosquitoes shouldn't be in Here's the my loot take. at all. I Cluster get, mines should not at all. I get people complain about mosquito drones. Um, but the thing is, they're really not... I don't personally get down to them ever. I guess there are instances where it's cheese. Like, if you shoot one in the middle of a gunfight and it gets a down, okay, I, I can understand that. But uh, one of the times we, we were playing and we got... Jake killed and some Jake died to one. I don't remember that, but I, 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 we won a game too when I did that to somebody at Graveyard. I don't know if you were there or not, but I called in a mosquito drone. It's on the map, making noise. It's on the mini map. It's there for two and a half minutes. The guy rotates in, get, gets <laughs> down by it. Then I hear him say, why, does, why do those things one shot? Why are they in the game? And it's like, buddy, 
Oh, it's yeah. been floating you. above you for two minutes. Why did you not just shoot it? So situations like that too. It's like, well, you're you're a dumbass for dying to that. Frankly, I mean, that's just embarrassing that you got down to that. You can hear that. I, I always shoot them down because they're all over the map, right? But I would be fine with them being gone for sure. Whatever, that's fine. At the very least, not in groundlet. Make it so you can buy them only. Them all down. Nobody's ever buying them if they're in buy stations only. That's the thing. So you can put them that way. Nobody's spending four or five k at a mosquito True. drone ever sure. right so yeah get sure. them out of ground i 100 percent agree with that but you know with all these kill streaks mosquito drones all that it kind of leads to the biggest issue which is how much audio pollution is on this map uh and in ranked play too so like since it's so small that since the map is so small and the announcer tells me any and everything on every corner of the map since again it's small that they tell me everything constantly it's Enemy UAV overhead, guardian active in your area, in your area, mosquito drone overhead, yada yada yada, precision airstrike, mortar airstrike. It's just constant. Everything. Yeah. They tell you everything mm-hmm. always. Um, on top of that, proc chat is bugged, so you hear people all the time talking, and they're always very loud for some reason. It's ten times louder than on Urzikstan. Uh, I was reading some stuff on Reddit. I guess people are saying they'll mute and it's still bugged and they still hear people talking. They turn <laughs> Prox chat good. off and that's they still cool. hear it. Um, that's so that's good. fun and bugged. And people were also saying, yeah, like you hear teams talking that are on the other side of the map. So that's cool. So you're dealing with that. But also, I don't necessarily want to turn Prox chat off because if it exists and it's working as intended, I want to be able to hear somebody talking because I can find out where they are from that. Right. Or if I'm playing random fill and a teammate's talking, you kind of have to leave voice chat on, right? So yes. the only way to solve that, prox chat needs to just be removed from ranked resurgence. Uh, I'm not sure why that's in. But you can't type, I don't think, in ranked. I don't think you should be able to have prox chat. It's fine on big map where it's like you can't hear everything all the time, but on resurgence where you hear 30 people talking at all times on the small map, you need to just remove it, right? So that needs to go. I, yeah, I agree. Another thing with the audio, most of the time, not always, when you're outside, there's just ambient noise, and a lot of it. You go stand somewhere on Urzik stand, there's almost no ambient noise. There's just nothing happening. You hear almost nothing. On this, there's wind. There are sounds playing. Don't know why that exists. Another layer of just audio clutter that makes me not hear the things I want to hear. Um, so it's like, how how can audio be so good on Urzikstan and just awful and cluttered on this? It's really bad. And removing all the streaks from ground loot and making them purchasable only would help with the audio clutter and just the cheese of constantly calling in streaks. Yeah. I mean, I'm not kidding. Most matches, I'll, I'll use four or five mosquito drones because I just find them. If you yeah. make them buy only, I'm never going to buy them. It's going to solve that issue. In a rare situation, maybe I'm like, oh, late game, I'm going to buy one of these. It's not that busted, but them being in ground loot all the time, yeah, that does get pretty annoying. It's constant. Um, mm-hmm. I was very... It's funny that I had said before we got this, when we were reading the blog post, I was like, oh, well, at least there won't be as much streak spam as there used to be on Fortune's Keep. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> uh, there was a ton of streak spam on the original Fortune's Keep, because that map had a ton of money and there weren't limited buy station inventory. So people would buy like a million precisions and uh, what were they called? Clusters? Yeah, clusters mm-hmm. in uh, at, at the time. And there was a ton of streak spam for that reason. Now there is a ton of streak spam once again, which I was not expecting because of how common it is in ground loot. It is insane. And like Tanner's right, kind of like... Yeah, you can just shoot down the mosquito. Like, if you run into it, that's kind of, like, on you. That's but a also, issue, like, yeah. early and mid-game, I don't have time. Like, I'm being shot by eight other people constantly. I don't well, you have just do it if you're running like, into the area, yeah. Because they, they don't have a look very up wide and shoot a mosquito. range. Uh, or if someone, like, uses them offensively on you, then you have... There's pretty much no counterplay. Like, okay, you, you just have to eat this. And they're super, super, super common. Not to mention counter UAVs are extremely common. Uh, UAVs are not common, so that's fine. Mortars are extremely common, and precisions are extremely common. So there is just always the danger of just dying to some random streak. Uh, I have been downed 
to a no noty precision in Fortune's Keep, despite all the updates to to the uh, the UI and noties that they've done for that and little tack map banner. I believe what happened was I ballooned from one area to another while it was being called, and then I just was in the area and died. Uh, and that is just should not be happening. And there are entirely, obviously, way too many streaks. Like, yeah, probably triple or quadruple the amount that should be in ground loot, if there should be any at all. I actually agree with Tanner. I think streaks should be purchasable only. Have all of them, I guess, but you have to buy it. Uh, that would be so much better because it's really dumb that I get like a free team wipe because I found my 10th mosquito and threw it randomly. That's what I do, by the way. I, I pick up a mosquito. I immediately throw it randomly. And like 50% of the time, I will get at least a hit marker, if not a down. And I didn't earn that at all. Why? It's so dumb. There was a time, I'm not joking, and I should have clipped it. I was playing with Jake and Cope, and we were in town, walking around, not seeing anyone, so we weren't really calming with each other. And I, I want to say it was a solid 45 to 60 seconds straight of the announcer saying, enemy UAV above, enemy mortar in the area. Enemy precision airstrike. Enemy, mos enemy mosquito in the area above. Enemy counter UAV. Enemy precision airstrike. Enemy mosquito. Like, it was that absurd. And because we weren't talking to each other that much, all we're hearing is this, and it just kept going. It kept going. It kept going. I start laughing, and I'm like, dude, are you guys hearing this? It was a joke. Yeah. That's how many streaks there are. And the announcer has to tell me every single time, even though the mortar was called in winery and I'm in town. Okay. Change the radius and also take all the streaks out of the ground loot. Yeah. It's a disaster. If you guys remember when Ashika launched, that's how many kill streaks there are as ground loot in ranked. Just a joke. Way too many. Yeah. Change it. Oh, yeah. There yeah. are counter UAVs everywhere, too. That's the other All one. All the time. Yep. Yeah. Those are super common, too. Mm -hmm. Incredibly common. So what's going to happen yeah. is they're not going to remove or nerf the spawn rate of any of these. And instead, in Season 2 Reloaded, we're going to get the new Bunker Buster kill streak, and that will be added to it. And the Bunker Buster kill streak damage range is... 30% of the size of Fortune's Keep, so somebody's going to call it in anywhere and kill 30% of the lobby, yeah. Correct. GG's. Super cool. So, yeah. Yep. But yeah, um, so kind of like the last little thing here is kind of talking about how it's going to flow and work and ranks when, uh, when the upcoming, when the tap meta will be ending soon, so guys that know basically now to get kill sr your teammate down somebody you put one bullet into some guy downed you get full sr for what your teammate did even though you did one point of damage to that person while they're down you get the full amount of sr so they're changing that so you have to do damage before that person gets down so i've kind of been thinking about how i would play personally and because of this system you already play together but we don't exactly play fully together. Like we don't, we're, we have not been holding hands at all because we, you haven't had to, because we're at the lower rank. So, cause we haven't played that much. So you don't have to hold right. hands, but when they change it to this system, I mean, I'm just talking about personally, I can't see myself being further than 10 feet away from my best teammate. Cause I want to just team shoot whoever yeah. they're going to shoot so that I can get full SR. Right. So I feel like, it's going to make the stacking even worse, even though the overall flow I think will improve and it'll make it feel faster because I'm not leaving somebody down for my teammates to tap. I feel like what it's going to lead to is a lot more team shooting, which is going to make the up close time to kill feel abysmal. And anywhere you go, you will see three people attached to each other, which surprisingly actually in ranked has not been the case so far for us. And again, I think it's because we're at lower ranks 
half of these people are random filling. So they don't, they're not talking, they're not calming. They're far away from each other. But, um, yeah, I've, I've kind of been surprised at how little stacking there there has been. It's not nearly as bad as I thought it'd be, but I think this will make it even worse because of that. So I don't, I don't know though. I, I still think this system they're going to is very flawed, but I don't have a better suggestion. I don't know what they do. So I'm excited to give it to a try. Hopefully it will feel a lot better, but it's it's just gonna lead to insane stacking and team shooting always because of this. Because everyone's gonna need their SR, especially if they make no other changes to how the SR works. If they don't reduce entry fees or if they don't make SR for kills higher than they are now, players are going to earn on average less SR unless you are tied to your teammates at all times, um, which means it's going to make it even harder to gain SR at the higher ranks and rank up even more than it already is. So I don't know. I'm Everyone thinks the system is going to be great. It's like, oh, no more tapping, but I'm not so sure of that. I think it's going to end up being also terrible, to be honest but still slightly better than what we had. Yeah, this is interesting. I don't know, because my original contention was it's ranked, people are going to be stacked regardless. But when you said that people have not been stacking that much, and I think about it, you are right. People have not been stacking nearly as we much really as I would expect them We really haven't encountered it at all. To. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see it every once in a while, but yeah, like in general, people don't stack actually, which is really surprising. They play like close ish to their teammates, but they're not like, yeah, like on top of each other or anything. So will this make stacking worse? Probably. Yeah. On the other hand, though, the time to kill is fast enough now To where, like, if Jake sees someone and starts shooting him, even if I'm right next to him, I don't know how often I'm going to be able to, like, get shots on before he's down regardless. Like, the time to kill at, like, the Rams' first damage range is what? Like, 700 milliseconds? Like, am I... Am I going to be getting bullets on inside of 700... Inside of a second? Like, how often is that going to be happening? So, like, I don't think people, people might try stacking so that they can all team shoot every person. Yeah. But if they do, I think they're going to quickly realize how unrealistic that is and then kind of just go back to playing normally. Uh, On paper, this would increase stacking for the reason you mentioned. But in practice, once people actually try it, I just don't think it's going to work. I can be inside of Jake. But if he sees someone pings them and then starts shooting them, I mean, he, the guy, again, it's like a 700 millisecond time to kill with like a meta gun right now. Like, I'm not going to have time to like move my thumb to that guy inside of 700 milliseconds and get shots on. I don't think so. I don't know if it's going to increase stacking in the long run, but again, it might for sure. I don't really know, but even if it did, I think it would be worth it. To be done with the tap meta for sure. And it will increase the pace a lot. So like, yeah, even worst case scenario, I think overall the flow of ranked is going to be a lot better. And also let's not forget, this is almost certainly going to be coming to Urzikstan when we get ranked big map BR. And there I could see the problem you're describing being a lot worse where the time to kill is a lot longer usually because you're at your longest damage range, not your second or first. I think stacking, if it's going to be a problem because you want to team shoot, I think that's going to be exacerbated way more on big map than on uh, fortunes keep. That's going to be interesting because there it does seem um like it would work in practice you know like jake sees someone 70 meters away and pings him jake's not killing that guy inside of 700 milliseconds no gun even has that time to kill and he's also not hitting his theoretical time to kill either so if your ttk is you know 950 that's assuming you're hitting every bullet 
and you're usually not on Urzikstan. So it's going to take him like two, three seconds to down the guy yeah. if he's shooting him alone. That will be enough time if I'm stacked for me to get shots on and get rating. So I think it's going to make stacking worse on Urzikstan when we get ranked Warzone there. But not as much on Fortune's Keep, I don't think. But on the other hand, also, people stack more on Urzikstan than they do in Fortune's Keep anyway. So maybe it's not going to make stacking worse on Urzikstan, but but rather, stacking is always going to be bad on Urzikstan no matter what. Yeah, That might be true, too. I don't know. Overall, though, I think this is a worthwhile change. And um, if we're wrong, they could always revert it. I guess we'll have to wait and see, ultimately. I'm not, like, 100% confident in everything I just said. But yeah. that's kind of what it seems like to me. I think overall it's going to be an improvement. I just think they're going to have to make other changes to the SR in general, um, how everything works in order for this to work correctly. I agree. Cause it's like, I agree for the reasons you've listed here. Yeah. Because like everyone's already saying people in top two fifty, they now back out of matches. If they see another really good top two fifty team, because they know that one of those teams is going to lose a ton of SR. Cause they're going to just die early probably. And the other one, is going to go back and forth fighting good teams the whole time so much as to where they will win the game and still lose SR. So yeah. something is going to have to change because in general, people will be getting less SR now, I think, because you won't have that tap. You, you won't be tapping to get full Correct. SR. So there will be numerous times where, again, unless you're attached to the hip of your teammate, you will get teammate kill SR, which is basically, it's like 30% less than than you yeah, getting it's two the or kill. three less yeah so um yeah it's like this has been a big complaint lately of the top 250 players they will win numerous games in a row and lose sr there's a tweet here from braxton who's in the top 250 he said four game win streak minus 40 sr <laughs> so you win, yeah you win four great. in a row top 250 of ranked and you're still losing sr i get what they're trying to do and I like it in theory. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. Uh, I it's I think it's stupid that they gain like 200 SR for a win like they were in Urzikstan or in uh, Mazra. It should be very skill based rather than time based. But I think you gotta change up the SR a little bit. If you're top 250 winning a match, in my opinion, you should never be losing SR that match. At the very least, make it so you break even and you get zero SR. But even then, it seems a little Ooh. weird that it's it's difficult to climb. I think somebody in Discord suggested that and it or maybe somebody in, in chat That's one of the last episode. Suggestion. If you win a game, it should just wipe any negative SR. I agree that makes total sense. That's a good But even then going yeah. from losing ten to just earning nothing, not that much of a difference. It's a start, but I think they're gonna have to change up the way SR works when they do this change. Like so like right now if you're if you're place nine through 17, a kill or an assist is five SR. I think they need to up all these. So it goes five SR. Then when you're four to eighth place, it's seven SR. When you're first to third, it's 10 SR. I think they, they need to do some things like nine to 17 squads left. You get seven SR per kill rather than five. Uh, and then I think it should be like one to three to get 10 SR for, I think that should be like one to five, maybe. So fourth place, fifth place are also included, or even like for like maybe even a different variation from one to three, maybe like a four to six or something. I don't know. Um, but like more SR 15. in general. Yeah. So instead of like plus 10, that should be plus 13 plus 15, something like that. Cause the SR system right now, I think makes it like nearly impossible to climb rank when you're that, skilled going up against those players because you're also since there's only 50 people queuing in the lobby you're not playing against bad players if you're iridescent top 250 yeah, you are exactly. not playing with anybody that's not cracked out of their mind and so there's some True. team in there that's cracked out of their mind better than 99.9% .9 of the player base and they're going into that match just losing 150 SR basically because they're going to get wiped off rip to some team that's even better than them and they just lost all of that entry fee so like that needs to change too i think i think the, the entry fees are too expensive for what it is so 
Uh, this is it's good that we're getting rid of the tap meta, but I think they're going to have to change a lot of other things with this SR. They system. for sure will. Yeah, you're I don't. Right. They, they didn't mention it, so who knows? They may just think it's fine removing the tap system. I don't they know. for sure will have to. I, oh, okay. I, yeah, I yeah, should yeah. say. Yeah, because you're absolutely right. Yeah, the the there people will earn less SR now than they used to because you're going to get because yeah you can't do the taps um like for 100 percent so if people I, again a four game win streak and you've netted negative 40 sr that's wild man mm -hmm. like Playing and i don't believe braxton was just like winning games with two kills either like no. he probably had a I mean, good number of kills top 10 at the War world series of war zone so he's not bad yeah, exactly. So I because the problem you'll have if they don't change anything else is people are just going to camp top 250. They're like, all right, I got the top 250 calling card. There's I can gain like 10 SR if I do really well next game. I'll just camp here and never play again. Yeah, or I'll you lose don't want that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'll just camp for my rewards and that now I basically can't play ranked anymore for fun because the it's too like burdensome. It's too difficult to earn rating. That is a, it's a tough, I don't know what exact, I think they do just keep like tweaking. Like there's no big sweeping change they could make to fix it because you want it such that you're not incentivizing people to camp top 250, but you also don't want people to, only be in top 250 because they put in more time than other really good players. You got to find the middle ground there and there's no just magical solution. Again, this is really easy in one party versus another party games because there's an ELO system. So like one team has this ELO rating. The other team has that ELO rating, the amount of rating you're going to gain or lose on this match will depend entirely on your ELO and their ELO. It's very easy. Like you can't mess that up, but yeah. there aren't just two parties here. There are a bunch and I don't think you can take into account how many teams are there? 51 over three, 17, what, I think, which is what I said. You can't take into account the rating of 17 teams and, and like do it that way that I don't, Maybe you could if you're like, I don't know, any mathematicians in our audience, if you could let me know how you could somehow devise an ELO system when there are 17 separate parties, uh, let me know. Because that might be possible, actually, but I don't know if Activision is going to do that. Um, and assuming that's not possible, you just have to like, yeah, I think tweak numbers a little bit. I think that is the only solution they're really going to have. And to be fair, uh, I don't blame them for having this problem that they're having right now with the rating, uh, with it being too punishing for the best players. We said, like, I don't blame Treyarch because in a vacuum, how do you come up with like the perfect system where people don't camp or they don't just get rating for spending time? it's like impossible to do it before, like to figure out what exactly that should look like before you try it. So they got pretty good uh, for their first little attempt, but they need, it does need more tweaking. Um, but that's not a, that's not to fault the devs, Yeah, but it is to implore them that we do in fact need more tweaking. As Tanner said, especially now that the taps are going to be going away, that means everyone's going to be earning less R less SR. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's going to that that's going to have to be compensated for in some way. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know if you do it with kills or placement or what, but yeah, I'm curious to think too what the top 250 players are saying, because I know the only thing I've seen all of them say is get rid of the tap system, but I've yet to personally see anyone like make a suggestion on like the SR changes. I don't know if they think they're going to earn more SR this way. Maybe they do think other changes need to happen, but everyone just says get rid of the tap. So and it, it, again, it kind of seems like one of those things to me where people are like, do this, do this without thinking about anything else, maybe. And it's like, well, you're going to earn even less SR if that's all they do. So, I mean, they need to do a lot more than that. But yeah, they may just do this change to start with and then be like, we're 
going to be watching closely over the next few days, see how the SR is looking. If people are losing too much SR, we're going to make some tweaks, blah, blah, things like that. I can all see them doing that. Like I have faith they'll get it to a good spot, but if they just do what they said they're going to do and nothing else, this will be bad, I think. But. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But yeah, so and I mean, keep in mind, by the way, this doesn't matter for like any of you listening. That's that's a great point. Yeah, that's so. a great point. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter that much for us. Even if we wanted to play a lot, we can get up into the higher ranks. But realistically, we'll probably just stop at some point. Um, yeah, for sure. But uh, we we yeah. are not at the at rank like lower yet ranks, where gold, it- silver, bronze, even platinum. You're not going to be running into an issue where you're losing a bunch of SR every match. It would be difficult yeah. for us to lose SR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still. But yeah. the reason, yeah, it's like the reason we're talking about this is because ranked kind of is designed for good players, and so when it's not working well for really good players, and you know, it's kind of a, yeah, you want the system topic. to have integrity, yeah. even if you're not going to be affected. It. Yeah. I want to know that the top two fifty players like earned it by being skilled, yeah. not by putting in time. Yeah. Like any kid sure. that has the season five or six Warzone iridescent calling card doesn't matter to me because that's the season where you couldn't didn't lose SR the if Alt you Alt F4 F4 So none yeah. of those kids deserve to actually be in there. So that calling card means nothing, right? That's why it every single deleted, person yeah. has it. Yeah. Right. But anyways, so like all that being said, it sounded like we bashed a lot and we did because we're critical of the map and the map does suck for some reason ranked actually has been pretty fun with all of these issues um i don't know if it's because it's new and it's a rank system it's the first rank system in this iteration of warzone not really sure but um primarily the reason is probably because we haven't played enough to hate it yet so i i just hit platinum one last time i played i'm like halfway to platinum two I haven't really gone in up against any good players yet. Right. So like at that rank gold platinum, those are much easier lobbies than we were to get. If we play pubs with SBMM existing, like that's like ranked is literally an easier lobby for us at that point. Yeah. Statistically it is. So, um, I think that's part of the reason too, because Raz and I played some pubs and I'm like, these kids are insane in pubs. I'm like, what, this guy's in the league. Why is he not playing ranked right now? What is he doing? He's like, do yeah. he's, he's solo, solo duoing us and just, I mean, we're not even doing damage to this guy. I'm like, why is he not in the league? Get him out there, right? So yeah. that's probably the biggest thing so far is we haven't gotten to the ranks where we're playing really good players that we're used to playing. So it's it's been very fun because of that. We're winning, getting a lot of kills doing it. Um, but like in, in general, I think... If you're going to play Fortune's Keep and you have friends um, and you're playing, you know, trios or quads or whatever, just play ranked trios. It's a much better experience for still as flawed as it is. I think it's a lot more fun. And like surprisingly, every time I play ranked, I always think I don't get why these people are playing ranked, but they exist. There were really not great players out there that main ranked play and they just, you know, they get hard stuck around gold, gold two, gold three. There are a lot of those people. So don't be scared to play ranked because it says rank. Cause trust me, your lobbies may even be a little bit easier too. If you're an above average player, your lobbies to start in ranked will be easier for you. Your so, first game will almost certainly be easier than a pubs match. You yeah. should. Yeah. Cause you're starting yeah. bronze three or whatever. We won what three, our first three games of ranked. And I think we lost one and then we won like another two in a row or something. We went on it's multiple a, yeah, wins. It streaks. was a joke. It was like a, a, a joke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a joke. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, shoot. What else was I going to say? Oh, the reason bad players continue to play ranked, by the way, even if they're hard stuck like gold or whatever, by the way, no shame in that. It's just a video game. Who cares? Um, if you're listening and you're hard stuck gold, good for you. Uh, the reason I think a lot of people are doing that is because, Ranked has less cheese, maybe that's why. Has more balloons, maybe that's why. Um, and because it has the dual leveling system in ranked play. They're playing for stars. And that's why I love that uh, reward track. That doesn't. It doesn't matter if you're skilled or not. You can earn stars even if you're in bronze by placement or whatever ways you earn stars. Uh, so like you don't have to be good for there to be a reason for you to grind rank play. You might just really want the like rank 30 
you know, blueprint or the rank 50 operator skin, which I really like and I really want. I doubt I'll play enough to get it, but I could. Anyone could because uh, it doesn't require skill. And because of that, if you are like hard stuck gold and the only reason you're playing really is to grind stars, you are helping other players have precise matchmaking yeah, because you're true. playing to like get stars. So then like, you know, it, it makes the integrity of every lobby better because with more people playing, you can have stricter, tighter skill-based matchmaking, which is what you do want for a ranked mode. So it's great. Um, and I really like that, but yeah, I, I echo Tanner's sentiment despite all of the problems with uh, the map itself. And that's where the biggest frustration has been for me is the map itself. And then to a lesser extent, some of the problems with rank specifically, like the um, not being able to back out, uh, the streaks, the insane streak spam, um, and all of that, uh, it's still a lot of fun because it's a ranked mode. I'm still earning SR virtually every single game I play. It feels fun to earn stars and it feels fun to see your rank go up. It's fun to see the little flames behind your icon as stupid as it is. It's cool. I like it. Like, oh, we have purple flames now. Like, that's fun. You know? Oh, yeah. We're getting um, flamey. And you don't get that. We're flamers. Um, in pubs, it, it feels like you're playing for extra stakes. And that's really cool. Uh, so I'm still having a tremendous amount of fun with ranked because the ranked system generally and how the SR works and all of that, it's not perfect. There are problems at the top 250 end, but for most players, most of the time, it's a great system. It works well and it's really fun. Um, and I feel like you're rewarded in proportion to how well you do generally. Yeah. And that's going to be even more true once the tap thing goes away. Um, and yeah, I, I really enjoy it tremendously and I hope we get ranked on a good map. That would be really fun. Ranked Urzikstan, that sounds fun. Ranked like Vondel? Oopsie. Well, ranked oopsies. Rebirth. Ranked Rebirth would be fun. Ranked Rebirth. Vondel actually would play yeah. the best, I think, for Ranked Resurgence, but the players would mostly like Ranked Rebirth the most, oh, I yeah, think. Yeah. Sure. Um, I would take all of them over ranked fortunes keep. Like I'm having fun playing ranked because of how good ranked is structured. Despite the fact that you're forced to play on literally the worst war zone map to do it. That's yeah. how fun it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how, how fun right. it is. Yeah. Right. I hope we get ranked big map soon. Um, uh, I, I, a lot of people are thinking now it is it's season three. We're getting it. So that'd be cool. Cause that's only, That'll be in March. That would be nice. I would really like that. That would be almost too late. So that we better get yeah. it by then. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't get it in season at the launch of season three, I'm going to be a little upset. Yeah. Really I'm going to be upset. deeply upset. Yeah. So anyway, that's it. Boys and girls. Hope you enjoyed patreon.com slash the drop shot. We just released a bonus episode. You can go listen to that. And then also you get ad free episodes of all of our episodes, public and bonus apps. Um, and you get early access as well. We upload the audio of our public feed ad free as soon as we're done recording and rendering it. Um, so you can listen, you know, bright and early on Monday morning for the Saturday apps or, or even Saturday night if you're working graveyard or whatever, uh, or Sunday. That's how time works. Um, uh, and then also for the Thursday episodes, we upload those Thursday evening as well. So stay humble. Stay humble.